Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Tomorrow's Talent Series Q&A. My name is Dana Toomey, and I'm an assistant director at Michigan Technological University Center for Educational Outreach. Tomorrow's Talent Series is all about showcasing in-demand careers through videos, Q&A sessions like this one, and other curriculum resources. Today, we are joined by Dale Hemmela, who is an electrical engineer for UPCO. Hi, Dale. How are you doing today? Doing well. Yourself? Doing well. Thank you so much for being here. No problem. So for those of you joining us who haven't had the opportunity yet, make sure you stop by our Tomorrow's Talent Series website and check out the video. Um, if you have any questions for Dale today, you can feel free to use that Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. So with that, let's get started. Um, can you tell us very simply, what does your career as an electrical engineer entail? Uh, we got 25 years in industry, or basically out of, out of Michigan Tech. Um, I've worked in iron, steel, chemical, and all utilities. So I've been around the block, if you would say. Um, at UPCO, I do uh, basically broken down in a couple different se sections is uh, distribution standard. So that's, that's where I lay out how a pole, like a power pole has uh, clearances for the transformers, wires, and uh, making sure everybody's safe, both our workers and, and the public. Um, I also have the, the system model where I can actually model our whole system and uh, basically put in different wire sizes, different customer sizes, and uh, how much load is, you know, different locations. Make sure everything's stable. Uh, if you've uh, kept up with the news, you see Texas hasn't done that, and they have, had, they have a lot of issues right now going on because, uh, you know, they've got a lot of um, a generation down, and then there's different issues that they have with the increased load that they got going on. Uh, they also have equipment specifications. So, transformers down to poles as far as how they're built, what materials they use as far as the manufacturer, making sure they meet our spec, um, load forecasting. So that's where I look at uh, our current load. And really for the next five to 20 years, I got to look at the anticipated load growth in each area and make sure our system can handle it. And that's where I, was, I showed in the video where I, I use SCADA for that is find, finding how much current is going down a particular uh, feeder. And then the, the last part is really distribution planning. So I look at you know, a five year plus look at our whole system and based on that load forecasting, where do we need to do improvements in our system? And beside what I've done there, you know, I, I've also did a lot of in my past done control and robotic systems and also been a, a manager of 25 plus engineers and, and also hourly people up to 50 people. So I've done a bit of both engineering and management as well. Wow. Yeah, you mentioned all this experience. So how did that bring you to this current position? A lot of it started when I was in high school. You know, I looked at, uh, you know, I had an a, a interest in electronics. So I took a uh, electronics course in my senior year in high school. Uh, NMU had a, where you could do a half a day at, at NMU. And then I uh, liked it so much, I decided to become an electrical engineer with encouraged from my parents. They, uh, I was going to go to strictly Northern, but uh, they uh, helped me out financially so I could go to tech. Do you think that, you know, your path uh, is pretty common? You know, are there other paths into an electrical engineering position for a utility? Nowadays, it's primarily you've got to have the bachelor's degree from an accredited university like tech or, uh, you know, in the past, I've worked with actually my first mentor. Uh, he was a drafter by trade and then worked into an engineering position. Nowadays, they, they don't really encourage that. They don't usually hire for that. They want that bachelor's degree in engineering. So that's a little bit different from when I started till now. So it's, it's, uh, it has evolved to that where you have to have the engineering degree. So what are some of your favorite aspects of your job? For me, it's the, uh, you know, the, the challenges that the job has as far as you know making sure we're able to feed all our customers and make sure it's safe um it it always changes it's uh you know based on the storms we've had or uh you know we've got certain areas where we've had a lot of load growth making sure our system can handle it and uh and also interacting with a lot of different people i, I like the social aspect of it um i'm one of the few people in upco that gets to travel from both the east east side of upco all the way to the west side in Ontonagon. so i get a, a lot of traveling if you know as as i want and it's not needed at usually, but that's something where I can interface with a lot of different people, so. That's great. And, and you know, you kind of talk about 
you've talked a little bit about some of the challenges, but um, what do you think are some of the most complex problems that you're working to solve in this role? The complex is really the, you know, where we like currently we've got a, uh, we're going to have an outage at a substation and uh, we got to try to feed from another substation, those customers, so they don't go without power. Um, that's one of the challenges right now. And that's where I use my, my uh, model software to make sure our existing infrastructure is going to hold up, you know, feed those customers. That's uh, and that kind of came out, came about because of the, our transmission company told us about it. And then we got to try to react to that and keep our customers in power. So it's one of those things that you don't know, anticipate that, and then, you know, next few years is something that comes along, and and uh, you got to react to it. So, yeah, you mentioned planning, you know, up to to five years in advance. Is it typical to kind of work with that kind of a forecast? And how do you get this information to know where you're going to see increased loads? A lot of that's anticipated as far as where we think the load's going to go. We do get uh, like um, uh, if you know, like the state of Michigan has road moves or anything like that. So we've got to work, work with uh, Michigan, the state of Michigan on that thing. So if we got to remove our lines or whatever else we have to do with them, they usually give us about a year to work, react to that. Um, and if we have any big customers coming in our area, they give us a decent amount of time to make sure we can supply them power. Uh, we do have occasions where, you know, they want something within a few weeks. So we've got to react quickly as well. So it does, it does change from, uh, customer to customer and, uh, you know, situation to situation, but we've got to be able to handle that, you know, that uh, workload back in, you know, from long-term planning down to these short-term plans we have to, to make work too, so. So, um, UPCO servicing the Upper Peninsula of Michigan quite a bit, um, very rural area. How would your job differ if you were in a more urban setting? With uh, being a smaller, power company compared to the, the bigger ones in the bigger cities. Uh, my roles, like I mentioned earlier on, is uh, I'd be narrowed down to one or two tasks rather than all the different tasks I have. So being a smaller company, um, most people in my in our in our um, company, you have a little more roles that you take care of in a in a day-to-day -day basis where um, with a somebody that have a, you know working with a bigger city, you'd have one role, but you'd have a lot more customers in a smaller area. That's part of the issue that UPCO has is we've got such a vast system over a, a big terrain. You've got a lot of trees, you've got a lot of uh, things to worry about where uh, if you're in a big city, everything's pretty self-contained. You don't have the trees, you don't have the environment. It's in a short distance of a big load where ours is such oh, spread over such a big area. It's hard to make sure you keep the power on for everybody, especially with the, the storms we have and all the trees we have everywhere. So it's, it makes it challenging. Do you enjoy your role in being able to flip between multiple projects like that? Do you enjoy that kind it, of diversity? It keeps it, in, yeah, it keeps it interesting because you're, you're always on the, you know, something new usually comes along your way and you got to figure it out. That's where, uh, you know, I mentioned the, as an engineer, you're more of a problem solver more than anything. You got this problem that comes to you with a, like a customer needing power. Can you make that work for them? You know, that's, uh, that's an interesting Thing that always changes it's always a uh, something different that's uh you got different customers different industries and it's good for the area as we get these co these uh, customers in because they provide jobs for for the area as well too so there's a kind of a twofold so in the video you talked about working with a load flow program um and what types of variables are you testing in that program like I said, that the our load flow program, that's our uh, simulation program. That's what uh, it has all our, our line conductor sizes and uh, you know, our clearances and how much load is currently out there. And uh, so what I do is I take that and uh, add, say I get a, a big customer going somewhere on our system or on one of our feeders. I can actually simulate that load on our system and make sure everything's gonna work. And in our case, it's basically, can we maintain the voltage level? at a, a good level to make sure everybody's happy and not complaining about their lights flickering or whatever it might be. And uh, and making sure our lines don't burn down because if you put too big a load, just like you do in your home, you've got uh, a correct wire size. We've got the same thing with our overhead and underground conductors. You gotta make sure that that those wires can feed our customers. And uh, and with these bigger loads coming, I, I can simulate it on this program just make sure everything's gonna work. I'm glad that you mentioned, you know, the correct size wiring and things, because I, I wanted to follow up with you about that. So what kind of questions are you asking these businesses to determine what uh, size wire um, that they would need? 
So they basically take, gave us a, uh, they've got an application they fill out when they want service from us. And they also give us a, a, a load study that tells them, tells us how much load they're going to use. And off of that, we've got to figure out, you know, what size transfer, what size wire to feed that particular residence or, or business with. And, uh, and we got to make sure we're able to, you know, obviously maintain the power that they're going to use. And uh, they actually, uh, you know, works twofold in that way where they give us what they're going to use and we make sure that we can supply the power to them so it works out well. Have you ever had a business ask for more power than you are able to provide for other organizations? It does happen on occasion. That's where you got to look at the data that they give you and make sure it's it's valid data. You know, it's it's uh, it, it does occasionally happen. So it <laughs> keeps it interesting. So it's uh, it's one of those things we got to make sure we don't put too big a transformer because uh, it, what happens is each transfer has losses in it. So there's, you know, if you put too big a transformer there, we might be losing money, you know, just supplying power to that transformer. So. Can you talk a little bit about how your job has changed since you first started? That's probably the biggest one from, you know, I hate to say my age, but uh, you know, from when I first started, a lot of drafting was done by hand. Uh, they didn't have simulation programs back then. It was all done by hand as well. So that just from my career, from when I started till now, the amount of uh, uh, computers that are utilized for these for these tasks makes it much quicker and faster to do calculations. Like the, the load study I was talking about, that would take me weeks where I can do it on a computer within hours. So that, that's probably the biggest difference I've seen. And uh, I, know I mentioned in the video of AutoCAD, I was in the, uh, when I first started doing everything by hand, you know, doing drafting by hand and uh, then transitioning to the computers was, uh, was something I saw both uh, just from when I started till now, like I said, everything's transitioning computers, making it much more efficient and easier to use. And where do you see the future of this field going? I think the, the main thing there is that, you know, you've see, seen on the news is a lot of solar and wind generation. That's going to be the, you know, the change that we're going to see from that right from now until till I retire is really the the amount that we're seeing of the of that type of generation and a lot of the old coal plants going away. So we're, that's where we're going to see the biggest differences. And the biggest thing with that is you're going to these solar and wind generators are much smaller usually than the, the coal generation. So you're going to have many different areas that we have this generation on our system and integrated in our system versus um, just one large power plant and feeding all the distribution. It's going to be you know, these small solar generations that are going to be popping up everywhere. And we've got a lot of customers, um, residential customers that have their own solar solar panels on their houses to offset our cost of our power. So they we actually pay them for generating power out of their, out of their businesses. And they, that you see that a lot more each year. So in the future, what are some other responsibilities that you could take on or new positions that you could move into? For me, being an engineer, it's uh, the next step would be management. So that'd be uh, you know something I've done previous in my career, but uh, really as an engineer, I'm, I'm I'm a senior engineer right now, and that's the next step would be a management position. And uh, like I said, it's it's not a not a bad thing, but I really enjoy what I do now with engineering and what I get involved with. So. And if you could only use one word to describe people in this field, what do you think that word would be? Not, like, not really one word, but I just, you know, I, I kind of associate with problem solvers. You know, the most engineers are are trained in a particular field, like in my case, electrical engineering. And we're got to, you know, we're, we're presented some task, like a new customer or whatever it might be. And uh, it's a problem solving technique that we use based on our experience to make sure that we can get, uh, you know, somebody power and, and safely. Um, you know, that's, that's our main task is that, uh, you know, you get all these different variables that we're tossed every day. And, uh, you know, we're through school, you're, you're taught certain techniques and then, uh, and then you got to figure out how to use them in real life, really. So do you have any advice for students who might be interested in getting into this field? My advice would be, uh, like I mentioned, I did the, the high school level in my senior year going to a, a local university if they have that. Uh, another one that I, I'm actually involved with uh, personally is the robotics that each a lot of these schools have. And the amount of knowledge you can gain from working with those robots is, is tremendous. You know, I wish I would have had that as a kid. Um, but this to get your base started as a, is a, in electronics is a great start. And then um, also Khan Academy, that's another one that uh, both my sons use just to, to learn different things that they don't learn in school. 
there's a lot of information that Khan Academy has as well. Um, and if, like if, if you got somebody that's interested in the field of an engineering, I've, I've actually had a lot of kids job shadow me for a day just to see what I do and see if that's something they're interested in. And uh, you really, not only the engineering, but the, the utility field as well. So that's something that they can see. And is that something they would enjoy? I think that's, uh, that's something I'd encourage everybody to do. Um, like I said, I've reached out to a lot of, a lot of the high schools to, to make myself available for that. And it's worked out well. That's really great advice. Well, is there anything else that you would like students to know about this field that we haven't touched on yet? I think that's just about everything. So that's, uh, I think I've covered it all. It's, I, hopefully, you know, that's the main thing is just make sure everybody understands what I do and, you know, what it takes to get here. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dale. I also want to say thank you to our other partners, the MyStem Network, Upper Penis Peninsula Michigan Works, Bay College, Gogevic Community College, and our CTE educators. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about other careers, uh, again, make sure you stop by our Tomorrow's Talent Series website and reach out to us on Instagram. All right, Dale, it's been great talking with you today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Appreciate it.